At the beginning of New Year's Eve, I decided to participate in the weekly game jam, a competition in which I didn't manage to have a functional game out of the experience, but I got something much better, an ID for a video game that wasn't completely sh The team for the game jam was inside out, and having previously played a gnob, I wanted to recreate the camera from that game. By doing a right click, you could see the other side of the level. So I saw that and I thought that this could be a really good fit for the team. The one thing that I wanted to add was to fully move the camera around. This new camera is not far off from the original, so it should only take like 4 hours to come. Alright, so after 4 days of work and not a single game inside, I eventually had a camera system just like I wanted. The biggest program that I ran into was the upside down movement. I don't know if you ever tried to use any 3D software ever, but when you are upside down it's pretty much a mess. So even goddamn Unity doesn't know how to handle this, so how am I supposed to fix that in my game? Well, Blender doesn't have that problem somehow, so I did a bit of investigating and I figured out how it worked. You just invert the horizontal movement when the mouse button is up. So you could move the camera upside down without having your controls inverted mid-descent. So with all of this combined, I had a decent camera system for the game. That's cool and all, but we don't have a game yet. So I did a little bit of brainstorming in my notebook and I came up with two ideas. The first idea was not good. The second idea was having two players, one on top and one at the bottom. And they could potentially move together, like if they were linked somehow by something. I chose the second one because uh, I liked it. I liked it more. With that in mind, I started working on the gameplay loop of the game. And after a bit of thinking, I managed to figure out a mechanic that could be good enough for a game jam. The idea was to get both players at the predetermined location to win. If you manage to do that, there will be a big cube that will appear. And then you will be transported to the next level. But this alone will make for a pretty boring game, so to fix that, I did a tile that would let you unlink and control both players individually, without moving the opposite player. And with this mechanic, you also needed a way to relink the players together. So I added a red tile that would let you do that. And I also added a wall tile that would block the player if they were linking together. And then I was like, wait a minute, the mechanic would make a lot more sense if instead of cubes, or boring cubes, moving around, they could be magnets instead. So they can get magnetized and then they can get demagnetized. Hmm. And just like that, I rebranded the game from cube game to magnet game. I also added a rule that you could only win if you were magnetized. Otherwise the game would once again be too easy. I could just demagnetize, go to the win tile and peace out. So with a magnetized tile, a demagnetized tile, a wild tile for collision, and a winging thingy, I created enough edge case scenarios where I could make around 10 levels, where I would teach the player something new about the main mechanic of the game. After finishing the movement code, the game jam was already over. I didn't code the game fast enough because it was probably the second hardest programming challenge that I'd ever faced. The first one was probably coding uh, maybe cat simulator, race cat simulator, yeah that one. Yeah that was that was hard too. Really good physics. <laughs> the manic game actually required me to think for once, and I couldn't just copy paste stack overflow. So I was pretty much doomed from the start. But this didn't stop me from continuing to keep working on the game. So after one month of on and off work, I had all the initial ideas implemented into a small prototype. After a lot of testing, the game showed some potential. But it was pretty obvious that it was really hard and unclear for some people. It took one hour for one of my friends to complete the last level of the game. And it was like less than 12 blocks. And to be honest, it was probably my fault. Sir, 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 sir. Quoi? Je can. Pourquoi j'ai pensé que ça allait marcher? Après ça, lui, il va aller là. Après ça, je vais pouvoir aller mettre lui là, puis lui là. Puis il va me mettre. <rire> je l'ai là. Ok. Bon, là, après ça, c'est le puzzle le plus dur que j'ai fait de ma vie. Hein. Est-ce que je peux te dire ça? Là? The design was really bad. And with only 10 levels in the prototype, I was averaging around 40 minutes of playtime. The prototype also showed me that the game had a lot of depth for the amount of moves that you are able to make. With all of that playtesting, the prototype showed me that one, my programming skills are not optimal. Like I said previously, I'm not a good programmer yet, so the game ended up with a lot of bugs. Or I pause the game at least. And two, 
that this could be a really sick game if I added more mechanics and a bunch of polish to it. Besides that, the reception of the game was pretty positive, and the people that showed the game had encouraged me to keep working on it and had more stuff to it. So, with that in mind, I was determined to finish the game no matter what. Alright, turns out that I procrastinated over a year now. I needed to scrap the prototype and start from a fresh project to have a better foundation to build the game on. This means that I needed to remake the spotty movement system from scratch, and I didn't know where to start. Besides that, I am more a game drummer myself. Trying to stick to a game for multiple months is quite a different beast compared to a tiny game that you could just make in 3 days. So it didn't surprise me that I was often stumbling into the game drum wagon as soon as I saw one. Although I had managed to always boot up Unity and prototype certain mechanics that I wanted to make. But for the summer of 2020, I decided to take this more seriously and try my best to remake the game from scratch. So, during the summer, I redid the back end of the movement system, and to my surprise and demise, I stuck with collider base movement, which is not good. But at least it was more reliable and less janky than my previous attempt at coding a tile base movement system. I also made one of the most important updates of the movement that my previous movement system wouldn't account for. Verticality, yay! With a ramp tile, you can now be one block higher than before. This might not be the coolest mechanic yet, but this would work perfectly with future mechanics that I have in mind. It was pretty obvious too that my prototype liked a certain depth to it, so I hope that this new dimension will help solve that. The camera system also saw some changes so it can act more like a Google Earth sphere, that is to say, more smooth and more snappy if you click again. So, at the end of summer, I was left with a semi-functional foundation to build the game on, but unfortunately, I had to stop tech development to focus more on school. And that's the end of where I'm at basically. I know it's not a lot of progress for 3 years of development, but I hope this shed some light on the many ups and downs of game development. I also made some tools for the game around New Year's Eve of 2021. I'm now ready to continue the development of the game with my schoolwork done, and I am very excited to document the process on this YouTube channel. For the time being, I will be posting some actual devlogs as well as a couple of videos that will not be related to the Magnet game. So thanks for watching!